New Year, New Moon, occurring January 13th, 2021. Bless up, gods and goddesses. I am Empress Nandi, ordained metaphysician, certified angel therapist, soul healer and teacher and intuitive, born of a ray beyond the indigo ray. And as always, it is my honor and privilege to serve you. Before we get into this new moon, please hit that like button, share this video, make sure you have comments to add below, and hit that notification bell to stay in the flow of wisdom. If you haven't subscribed, hit that red subscribe button. Thank you. The new year actually occurs at the commencement of spring. But for the sake of delivering this astrological wisdom, we will refer to January as the new year. This first new moon of 2021 occurs in Capricorn. The conjunction representing the new moon is extremely close to Pluto. The sun is life and Pluto is death. This duality is a very necessary part of life. With the first new moon of 2021, the sun is shining light on Pluto, and Pluto is representing the many deaths occurring in 2020. Pluto also represents regeneration or rebirth, as birth and life are a cycle. We can see Pluto as an indication to replenish our immune system, to avoid the same levels of death and destruction that 2020 represented. The new moon in Capricorn, next to this conjunction of the sun and Pluto, represents authority, power, ambition, and success. It represents what is possible when we're willing to put in the work. 2020 was a crazy year by anyone's estimate, but this new moon is a new cycle and it's giving us an opportunity to reset, kind of shake off the drama, death, and fear that 2020 brought us. New year, new moon, new cycle, new opportunities. The key here is to have learned from what we experienced in 2020, to reset, to do things differently, so we can have a different outcome by being prepared. So what does preparedness look like for you? Boosting the immune system of everyone in your household? Sea moss, elderberry, thieves oil, echinacea, golden seal, and colloidal silver are a short list of powerful immunity boosters. Google it data documenting vitamin D levels of at least 50 provide respiratory and immunity benefits. Get your super doses of vitamin D direct from the sunshine often. You can also take vitamin D supplements. Take advantage of this downtime. Shield yourself in divine light and love. Lift your spirits, lift your vibration, and this also will boost the immune system. See yourself, empowered creator, crafting power to affect and direct consciously chosen physical experiences. Going within more often, trusting divine guidance more often, invoking divine creative power more often. Some parts of the world are on strict lockdown right now. Maybe preparedness looks like a vacation while you're still able to travel. Perhaps it includes growing your own food, starting an online business or degree program. For some, it may include taking the injection, while for others, it's a hard no. Boosting the immune system naturally is preferred. Is it time to relocate, reevaluate, revision a world healthy, peaceful, prosperous, and free? 
liberated of mandated inoculation or F to the EMA camps. Whatever preparedness means to you, Saturn is around the corner and Saturn is often about obstacles. So the relevance here is if we are prepared, if we are truly learning any lessons from 2020, this Saturn appearance won't affect us as much. But if we're still moving in old, non-fruitful patterns, then this new moon can be more complicated, more difficult for us. 22 hours after the new moon, the moon will reach the conjunction of Saturn, Mercury, and Jupiter. Because of the fast movement of the moon and the slow movement of Saturn, the moon will act as a detonator. Boom, shakalaka, boom. Saturn's influence will trigger a chain of events. Saturn represents what we just went through in 2020. If you've learned and prepared yourself, made adjustments toward right order, Saturn's influence won't be as significant. Mercury is in the mix, and Mercury is all about intellect, communication, and listening. It could represent the news. It could represent your communication with others. It could also represent listening to your higher self. Boom, shakalaka, boom, shakalaka, boom. Mercury in Aquarius requires us to be inventive, to look to the future, and to leave the drama and trauma of 2020 behind us. Jupiter represents hopefulness, optimism, and great expectations. Because Jupiter is next to Saturn, it will help us, influence us, push us to find innovative ways to keep moving forward further and further away from the conditions of 2020. Jupiter, Saturn, and Mercury next to one another in Aquarius depend on Uranus, and Uranus represents Aquarius and it's in Taurus, right next to Mars, and Lilith, a.k.a. the Black Moon. Mars, the god of war, is also here to trigger our fight-back response. It is here to tell us to defend ourselves against this biological and spiritual warfare. There is tension in the picture that could create a potential explosion around the moment when Mars will have the strongest influence with Uranus. Uranus represents the soul's desire to free itself from tyranny, indoctrination, depopulation, DNA manipulation, hysteria, fear-mongering, isolation, and reptilian New World Order control. Collectively, we don't like what this world has become. We want to free ourselves. Uranus is the future. Uranus is change. Mars will arrive in Taurus on the 6th of January. With the tension, the fear, and the frustration of how much our lives have changed, this could be like a boiling over point. But we don't have to let it. So right around this time, there was a staged event at the White House in Washington, D.C. It was an event to invoke anger and feelings of injustice, feelings that would further contribute to the low vibrations that are being used against us, that are being used to put us in hypnotic states, that are being used to keep us in feelings of fear and hopelessness. But we have a choice. We do not have to succumb to these tactics and these frequencies. We can look at them clearly see them for what they clearly are and make a decision that we will not have a boiling over point in this country, but that we will go within so that we can awaken the power to move and shift this paradigm 
to one that is more peaceful, more just, more pleasant. With Uranus in the picture, it is really calling for us to think outside the box, to figure out ways to navigate what is happening so that we don't have to succumb to it. That may look like thinking of ways you can earn money outside of a traditional nine to five. That may look like thinking of ways that you can live off the land. That may look like simplifying life, not relying on the grid as much. This configuration is one with great tension and later on in the month around the 20th, it gets even more tense. So these changes that we're making, we have to be careful not to be blatantly rebellious because it could blow up in our faces, so to speak, giving us an outcome that we don't desire. So the God of war is here reminding us to be careful regarding when we act, how we act, and the speed with which we act to avoid combustion. There's also the effect that this astrology has on Mother Earth herself, events of nature, weather patterns, and the like. Mars is like an accelerator and Saturn is like the brakes. Our existential vehicle relies on us to know when to accelerate, when to break, when to reverse, or when to move forward. Around the 16th of January, the moon will start moving into Pisces and Neptune, which are very watery aspects. That could even indicate some type of plumbing issue or water issue uh, involving home or with your vehicle. Perhaps, you need to protect your pipes from freezing temperatures or make sure the car radiator has sufficient water. The moon in Pisces and Neptune could bring lots of rain and potentially floods in some areas. This will be a period lasting about two and a half days, so just be on the lookout for water-related issues. The moon reaches Chiron on the 18th of January. This could be a positive indication for our health. Perhaps there's a new discovery, a new way of dealing with these biological agents, viruses, and illnesses. Perhaps we're more collectively focusing on our health and boosting our immune systems, eating foods that bring life force within us. We need to change the way we deal with life on this planet. We're being forced to change, so let's embrace the change. Let's have some level of control over the direction of the change. Let's return to nature aligning with the natural order that governs all things. Be very careful on the 20th, especially, and the 21st of January. The moon will arrive in the already explosive conjunction of Mars and Uranus, amplifying it. So don't get caught in the wrong place at the wrong time on January 20th and 21st. Speaking of, Inauguration Day is January 20th, 2021. So what's crackalacking in the cosmos January 20th, 2021? The U.S. Corporation's Inauguration Day. Mars conjuncts Uranus at 7 Taurus, with both square Jupiter and Saturn at 8 and 4 Aquarius. This is a recipe for eruption of a very difficult period with equally fixed forces and dynamic conflict. Also, on this Inauguration Ritual Day, 1-20-2021, and throughout the entire January 2021 compression, Pluto is at 25 Capricorn, the exact degree of two of the Jupiter-Pluto conjunctions this past year. Seeds planted, emotions felt, legislative moves made, Whatever was expanded or launched in early April and end of June 2020 play a major part in profound changes coming 
January 2021. Like the 726 2020 update to the CDC's shielding approach. In it, high risk individuals would be relocated to safe or green zones or camp sectors, having minimal contact with family members and other low risk residents. Google it. Call, write, email your local, state, and federal reps to say hail to the null with these color-coded camps, mystery injections, and whatnot. January 20th and 21st forecast a hostile, aggressive environment on these days. Old manifestation is being pushed out. New manifestation is being ushered in. They meet at resistance. If you find yourself in a hostile or aggressive environment on the 20th and 21st of January, do your best to protect yourself, disconnect, and disengage as much as possible. When we react, it is usually off the cuff, reflexive, in the moment, spontaneous. It doesn't allow us to think, to process, to consider other options. Mars represents this. We need to fight the tendency of reacting too quickly, too strongly, or with too much anger, as chances of mistakes are increased. January 24th brings discordant energy and might bring a day or two of storms. The full moon will be on the 28th of January, a time of letting go and releasing all that does not serve you. I pray this video has been a blessing to you. Please like this video, share this video, and express yourself in the comments below. I am thankful to my loyal subscribers. We welcome new awakened souls to our family always. Hit the red subscribe button and the notification bell to stay in the flow. I am Empress Nandi, and as always, it is my honor and privilege to serve you. Om. Peace. Amen Ra.